like to start the session uh, uh with uh, the chair as well as the co chair on behalf of the organizing committee and on my personal behalf i request mudukumar sir to chair the session at the same time i request also dr ritish kumar to co chair uh, this session please it is my immense pleasure to introduce to the august delegates and all my fellow friends dr uh, k mudukumar the chair for this session dr k mudukumar is currently professor in civil engineering at national institute of technology trichrapalli india he obtained phd in soil structure interaction and marine geotechnical engineering from indian institute of technology madras he has published more than 120 papers in international and national journals and conferences he has completed five r and d including isro chandrayana 2 mission projects and more than 60 major consultancy projects in geotechnical engineering and published two patents including moon soil a method which is a method of manufacturing of highland lunar soil simulant he has guided eight phd students and five ms by research and uh, more than 40 mtech students in geotechnical and allied research areas he is the founder chairman of indian geotechnical society of the trichy chapter he has received dst young scientist award igs srimathri indra joshi biennial award and keynote paper award in geomat conference held in 2005 at osaka japan so with this brief uh, uh, bioreta i welcome wholeheartedly dr k mudukumaran to chair the session sir welcome sir it is my pleasure to introduce dr ritesh kumar is the co-chair presently is the assistant professor in arkhakiri department of uh, esteemed organization iit roorkee he earned his msc engineering and phd in civil engineering from tokyo institute of technology japan he also earned mtech in arkhak engineering the soil soil dynamics stream from iit roorkee he was a post doctoral researcher at rkn center for computational science in kobe japan before joining iit roorkee he also worked as an assistant professor at geu dehradun and as a phd intern at university of california davis usa dr kumar does research on but not limited to physical and numeric related problems dynamic soil structure interaction and risk and reliability analysis in geotechnical earthquake engineering he was awarded university gold medal for his bachelor degree he is a recipient of the dad scholarship for the iit tu9 master sandwich program for germany and uh, mext scholarship instituted by tokyo technological university japan so with this brief bio data I welcome Dr. Ritesh Kumar to co-chair the session. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Thank you. Now it is over to the chair and co-chair to convene the sessions. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to the technical session. I take this opportunity to thank the organizer for giving us this opportunity. share the session and very important session and we have a very great eminent personality to deliver the so lecture uh, professor k s rao um, i believe all the five speakers are available with us uh, uh, professor kuntaraj i hope all are available with us all the five speakers technical speakers uh, there are uh, uh, three are available sir others has to join okay okay fine so please uh, the time management please you have to maintain according to the available speaker so since out of five as of now we have three speakers we can give uh, enough time for the so so speaker professor k s rao uh, exactly sir i'm very happy to uh, i'm very happy and pleasure to introduce uh, professor so speaker professor rao receiving his uh, master's in tech from iit kanpur 
and PhD from IIT Delhi, joined the Faculty of Engineering, IIT Delhi in 1986. His academic and research spanning over 40 years has been on engineering behavior of rock mass, stability of slopes, underground structures, foundations, numerical modeling, and seismic hazardous microsonation of mega cities. An established teacher, researcher, and active consultant, Professor Rao has supervised 25 PhD and more than 180 MTech thesis. And currently he is guiding 14 doctoral students. He is the recipient of IGS Professor Leonard's Best Thesis Award and Diamond Jubilee Award and 20 other IGS and IGS RM MIT. Professor Rao published technical papers in national and international journals and conferences. He has been the principal investigator of 20 major sponsored projects. Professor Rao designed and developed a large scale polyaxial facilities, static and dynamic uh, cyclic triaxial apparatus, impact on Green testing facilities at IIT Delhi. A large scale direct shear test facilities for mine dumping materials was established at CMPDI, Ranchi, under his technical guidelines. Professor Rao is the honorary fellow of Indian Geotechnical Society and contributed extensively to the growth of IGS for more than 24 years at various capacities. Professor Rao has been the editor of IGJ, Indian Geotechnical Journal and IGS newsletter. He was the president of Indian Geotechnical Society and president of Indian, Ge uh, Indian Society of Engineering Geology for the term 2011 to 12 and 2018 to 19 respectively. For his overall contribution, he was awarded the Lifetime Achiever Award in 2016. And Professor Rao delivered the 41st IGS annual lecture and received the Kukulman Award for the year 2020. Project in the area of soil, rock, and earthquake geotechnical engineering is a recent geotechnical modeling work for assessing the stability of Senov Bridge abutment as clear the way for the national importance. He is the consultant for Rongtok, Zimok, and Zogzilla tunnel projects. With this brief introduction about Professor Rao, it's a well-known personality, no need to have an uh, introduction for Professor Rao. Nevertheless, for the new audience for this particular group, and as well as the customary of this program, I briefly introduced Professor Rao. Uh, now I request Professor Rao to take over the floor. So now over to you, sir. Please. Uh. Thank you for the nice words, you know, say, Professor Muthukumaran and uh, uh, Professor Govind Razalu and uh, uh, also <coughs> Professor uh, Ritesh. Uh, a very good morning, delegates. Uh, uh, thank you very much, you know, say, for uh, <coughs> telling about uh, uh, my so-called, you know, say, uh, uh, academic, you know, so the attributes. That's okay. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, at the outset, you know, so the, let me thank uh, the organizers are also for giving me uh, this important uh, uh, slot, you know, so that to share my uh, views on you know, seismic hazard assessment uh, for tunneling. And uh, I also thank the chair, you know, so the uh, giving, you know, say slightly uh, extra time and I'm desperately you know, so the looking for that because so I loaded you know, so the large number of slides. So, but nevertheless, you know, so the depending upon you know, say your convenience, so please let me know like uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, accordingly, you know, so that I will try to uh, manage it. So the, the title is Seismic Hazard Assessment for Tunneling and uh, tunneling includes you know, so the, all the underground structures uh, which includes uh, not only the tunnels, mine shafts, edits, drifts, powerhouses, uh, caverns uh, for the military installations. Also we do a lot of uh, underground structures uh, and also for the repositories of hydrocarbons as well as uh, 
uh, uh, for the nuclear waste uh, repositories and many other uh, applications are also uh, there so i i read you know say the future is uh, underground so uh, tunnels are uh, uh, not new to us so since uh, uh, human inception you know say the keep digging the earth and you know for the shelter they used to do it and then subsequently for the transport purpose a large number of tunnels have been uh, constructed uh, with the advent of explosives so that is the black powder and the dynamite uh, so the excavation becomes uh, a, a cutting tool so thereby a uh, large number of tunnels you know, so the <coughs> they have been uh, the constructed in the uh, for the last 200 200 years and uh, these are some of the tunnels if you see it you know says so the 54 kilometers length 57 kilometers length uh, also uh, the diameters are gradually increasing it you know so the, with the uh, with uh, with the time uh, <clears throat> so not only across the uh, across the world uh, but of course you know so in an indian scenario also large amount of tunnels are coming uh, be it road or the railway tunnels so extensive tunneling is you know uh, happening it off late especially in the uh, mountainous uh, himalayan region so you might have heard about you know say the atal uh, uh, road tunnel so this is uh, almost like eight eight kilometers so at an altitude of uh, uh, <coughs> uh, the the roughly you know say the the three thousand you know say the kilometers so uh, uh, three uh, three thousand you know, meters so it is a very uh, prestigious very sophisticated uh, tunnel so I am closely associated with the construction of this particular tunnel and subsequently also advising it. Pir Panjal Tunnel is also another tunnel. It's a railway tunnel, so the 11.15 uh, kilometers. Uh, then uh, Chenani Nasri Tunnel, so which has been designated as uh, Sham Prasad Mukherjee Road Tunnel and many other uh, railways and road tunnels, they are coming up at different uh, locations and uh, uh, um, off late extensive uh, planning of tunnels uh, for the roadways as well as, as, well as railways uh, they are being done just you know so the i divided you know my presentation into two parts so the first part is you know so that to give the the tunnel scenario uh, <coughs> in the static uh, uh, conditions uh, and then subsequently i will be switching over to the uh, the under the seismic uh, uh, conditions so if you see it, you know, so the, because the tunneling is not a usual uh, uh, undergraduate, you know, so I was, you know, so the talking about this, you know, so the, the continental drip net, you know, so the seafloor spreading, so the mid of the ocean, if you see it, you know, so the, uh, you will be seeing it, you know, so the, I, uh, a lot of, so the seismicity is because of, you know, so the, 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 the boundaries of, you know, so the, the, the crustal boundaries, so the plates, you know, so the, uh, because of, uh, you know, say the push and pull, you know, say the lot of seismicity is there. So Himalayas, you know, so the, I was uh, showing that, you know, say the Himalayas are formed because of the push and pull. And then thereby most of the projects are actually situated here. So uh, uh, they are technically highly seismic and, you know, say the technically very active. And a lot of challenges are there, you know, so they're doing the tunneling, you know, say in the mountains. So I was sharing some of the information, you know, so the, in the static condition, how do we, you know, say the design. So the, the, the tunnel diameter versus, you know, say the material surrounding it uh, uh, is important. And especially when it is rock, you know, say the, so the, 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 the jointing patterns, etc., makes, you know, say the, uh, the, whether the tunnel is actually this uh, stable or, you know, say the, uh, uh, unstable. Uh, also, the the principal stress directions, uh, their orientation is also major concern when we are uh, doing the, the 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 alignment of the tunnel. Um, like you know, so the, if you have the crisscrossing joints are there, you know, so the, when you make the tunnel, so a lot of collapses will be taking place. Uh, so uh, uh, there are you know, so the stereographic projection you can anticipate uh, uh, how the failure is going to take place. So, so thereby you are prepared, you know, so the uh, uh, to make it stable. Sometimes, you know, so the, you are cutting across, you know, so the faulted zones or the shear zones. So, so they also, you know, so they gives you the uh, differential, you know, say so the settlement. So, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the soil condition, you know, so the K naught, uh, we normally talk, you know, say so the coefficient of air pressure and in the rocks, you know, so the, it is very positive. That means, you know, say so the, 
uh, the the ratio horizontal versus you know, so the vertical is very very high at uh, shallow projects uh, if the project is you know say so the uh, uh, above 500 meters uh, most of our projects are actually the shallow so thereby the horizontal stresses are very high rather than you know say so the vertical so thereby you need to take uh, into account you know so the while planning it uh, if you are, you know, say the continuous, you know, say the strata, the, the loads are actually the transmitting or the stress is actually the transmitting to the bottom and you are making a tunnel. So obviously, because of this, you know, say the, the stress cannot actually, you know, say the uh, go through the wall, wall vacuums. So thereby uh, these, you know, say the four points will be more vulnerable. So squeezing will be taking place on the sideways and uh, uh, here, you know, so the this is on the crown and you know so the invert locations so, so both will be experiencing it you know so the tensile uh, uh, stresses so, so both these stresses will make the tunnel uh, very unsafe so uh, without um, um, spending much time you know say so the what i want to say is uh, low stresses and high stresses so, uh, depending upon you know say so the situation I, uh, 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 both conditions are not good so thereby you need to follow what is exactly the stress state available and uh, to suit that you know say your tunnel alignment should be there uh, individual blocks will be sliding it one key block slides so, so the rest of the other blocks you know so will be also sliding then collapse will be there and uh, this is you don't have the raw uh, joints so, but you know, very good you know uh, um, in situ stress conditions but when you make you know say the the tunnel so you are uh, releasing the stress so, so that is actually the yielding it and then there with the spelling and the rock bursting is going to happen so this is the squeezing so the rock under the high stresses uh, will be uh, uh, subjected to the creep and the squeezing and then thereby your tunnel diameter is actually the getting reduced it so this is the best thing what one should actually do it once you establish the the this is you know so the vertical is actually sigma 2 and sigma 1 is you know so the horizontal and your shape of the cavity is this uh, to suit this uh, then it is going to be stable and uh, now also like uh, uh, major principal stress is you know so the vertical or here horizontal and inclined accordingly the locations where you know so the, you will be having uh, intense stresses so, so there will be the failures here the side walls will fail here the crown and the the invert is going to have the problem and here you know so the uh, at the uh, uh, at the spring levels you know so that you will be having the situation so uh, <clears throat> material behavior is not you know so the it's inborn the material behavior is you know so the conditions so, so if the material is highly brittle and uh, 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 the strain softening is actually the going to uh, uh, take place and it it could be you know say so the elastic plastic uh, that is the squeezing behavior or the material is actually the exposed to the elastoplastic deformation and then you know so that you have the uh, viscoelastic you know so the creep behavior uh, you know so the uh, hardening behavior uh, you see this you know so the tunnel is already there and you know you have the support system but the tunnel is actually getting squeezed and also you know so the lot of water issues will be there uh, when you make the tunnels, uh, the side walls, you know, so it looks very perfect, but then, you know, say with passage of time, you know, so the squeezing is taking place. Here, already the support system in place, but then they will get cumbled and because of, you know, say the rock bursting. Rock bursting, squeezing, uh, they are very common. And sometimes, you know, so you do have, uh, when you are excavating the tunnel, uh, the face is going to collapse. So, uh, a, a sugar cube type of, you know, so the highly fractured material is keep coming unlimited and along with the water. So it's a major issue. So, uh, well, and also sometimes, you know, so the, you will be getting a lot of, you know, so the big uh, uh, cavities. Uh, then also uh, uh, water issues, you know, so the eye uh, indicated. So what do you do is, you know, how do you, uh, does, how, how do you do the analysis and design of tunnels in the static condition? Of course, investigations, we do the investigations, complete mapping because the tunnels are actually going lengthwise and uh, determine, you know, so the behavior of uh, the, 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 the material, the boundary conditions uh, uh, and, you know, say so the uh, excavation methodology you work out and require support systems uh, and that is how actually the tunneling is done. So geological, geo, uh, uh, <coughs> geotechnical, hydrological, uh, seismological uh, uh, testing is uh, extensively uh, done. 
uh, and then also you know so we conduct you know so the in situ uh, uh, stress state and the, for planning the, the 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 tunnel if you see it you know say so the uh, terzaghi way back in you know, also the 1946 not only in soil mechanics and you know, also the his contributions uh, exemplary for the rock mechanics as well he put a Uh, uh you know so the beginning for the evolving of uh, rock mass classification systems so i tell you now the rock mass classifications are invariably uh, designated as you know design methods uh, in rock engineering he found in you know, also the when you have the tunnel you know say the how the loads are going to be calculated overhead and pressure what is actually the coming so that you know say your tunnel uh, properly can be designed apart from that over the time you know say that we have come up with you know say the uh active span length and its uh, stand up time let let's see like you know unsupported span uh, equation is actually the done how much time it is actually going to be stable so these two things you know so the jointly combined with you know so the the rock mass uh, classes so uh, makes the rock mass classification systems as uh, design methods most renowned classification systems in the rock engineering are armar that is rock mass rating and then you know say you have the q system one is uh, given by the barton and colleagues the other one is you know say benvisky and his colleagues uh, from different experiences they evolved what are the the parameters which influence the stability of the uh, for, uh, uh, underground cavities and then uh, of late you know say the gsa classification is also extensively uh, used so uh, these classification systems are extensively used not only to classify the rock but also design of the support systems and also to estimate the rock loads so uh, uh, not going uh, much into it uh, just i wanted to say that uh, uh, this uh, uh, classification systems will be uh, will be useful in you know, order to decide about the excavation methodology uh the support systems and many other uh, uh engineering you know say the feeds which we do it you know say for the uh, in the tunneling so uh <clears throat> this type of charts are available depending upon the armor or the q value so you can you can uh, uh, uh design you know say the the support system uh also uh, <clears throat> when you do you know so the you may be doing the full phase excavation that is in one go you are, are doing the 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 excavation or sometimes if the rock conditions are bad uh, ground conditions are bad you know say so you will be going uh, uh, bit by bit that is you know what we call is a, a drift to, uh, support system analytical solutions are there for the regular shapes and when you make the cavity so plastic zone will form and then beyond that you have the elastic zone will be there if the tunnel is actually remaining in the el- elastic zone you know so the stability is definitely there so the plastic zone um, uh, stresses in the plastic zone stresses in the elastic zone and uh, radial stresses uh, yield uh, zone radius uh, displacements uh, you can get it so analytical solutions are there based on that you know so the one can do the design and once you estimate the stresses uh, uh, and you know say the start excavating it uh, you need to uh, get the ground response how a particular ground is going to behave when you make a tunnel is it going to collapse you know so the fast or is it uh, stable enough so this is a ground re- uh, response you know so the analysis curve uh, <clears throat> uh, in the beginning of excavation you know say this is the the p loads are coming in the opposite direction support system is going to compensate that so thereby the tunnel is periphery is going to be stable but uh, it is not possible in you know, order to put the rigid support immediately as soon as you excavate because there are cycle times are there so, so after elap- elapsement of some time so there will be displacement because of the displacement the loads are also going to gradually the reduce it so the too early too late you cannot have it so thereby ideal uh, 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 you know say the the timing and the displacement you know say the uh, at what displacement you want to restrict and put the support that you need to decide so there is a, a very clear cut you know methodology is available uh, for the for the design of you know say the tunneling so the not only the tunnels for the stations you know so that we normally use the cut and cover uh, methods so, so then in the drilling in the soils you know so the 
what we we use you know so the epbm so that is air pressure balancing system so, so since uh, the soil is you know so they having the air pressure and when you are making the tunnel you know so it is going to squeeze inside so thereby to restrict that in in the opposite direction while doing the tunneling so these tbms you know so will uh, apply the pressure and subsequently of course you will be uh, uh, putting the lining rock tunneling is uh, tunnel boring mission so apart from that you know so they you have the uh, the natum so that is uh, uh, <coughs> norwegian uh, uh, tunneling uh, uh, technology um, <coughs> i will come back to that you know so the uh, uh, later and then you see that you know so this is how actually we do the cut and cover and we do the cut and cover you know so the for the you know, uh, not only the stations but you know so the sometimes the shallow tunnels especially the urban tunnels we do this and uh, uh, in delhi you know say the very dilapidated buildings but still you know say that 15 meters below you know so you can have a nice uh, metro the natum concept is you know say the earlier we used to think that you know say the rock mass uh, surrounding the tunnel uh, is loading the 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 system so not contributing for this, this stability but that is not really correct uh, since the rock is you know say the harder even if it is you know say the fractured uh, if you if you restrict you know say the displacement uh, by by putting a short crete or you know say the rock bolt so then a huge amount of strength is going to get mobilized and that that is actually going to give you the support to the uh, to the tunnel so that is the reason why you know say the with the least support systems you know say the uh, very gigantic uh, uh, underground structures are possible Uh, for this you know so the monitoring uh, of the tunnel which is already done if you if you monitor it you know so the with the instrumentation it will be good so that you know so the what is really happening it uh, after uh, after for, after cutting the tunnel um, <coughs> uh, if the response is you know so there is good uh, then is go ahead or otherwise you will be changing it you know so the what you need to do it so uh, once you have the excavation so you need to have the support what are the support system commonly we use it uh, rock bolts uh, because uh, uh, to tie the, the the periphery to the to the uh, to the, the more elastic you know so the media so that you know so the uh, <coughs> compressor zone will be formed so rock bolts so short crete so a layer of you know say so the one layer two layers of short crete of different thicknesses we will be using it this is pneumatically exerted you know say so the the cement uh, 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 cement slurry uh, uh, with high you know say so the the pressure that will be injected uh, ejected so that you know so that it will form a very uh, 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 a liner so the wire mesh also associated to it and lattice girders are very special a type of support system so so now if you see it you know so the you have the the freshly cut tunnel and you are putting the bolts because you have the 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 the, the plastic zone is there and beyond that you know the elastic zone so you are creating a compressive envelope so thereby uh, the stresses are probably uh, distributed and then you know say tunnel periphery is stable this is the the you you can also put you know say the short crete to uh, a layer so that is what the support systems normally we uh, adapt so here it is you know say the simple short crete that is actually the going to uh, <coughs> good enough you know to be stable so the bolts the variety of bolts are there and i'm not going into the details of it you know say the each one is you know so they having its own you know so the functions very easily executable Uh, in the site and they can be uh, of different uh, lengths so you do have the cable bolts also uh, for the for the china you know say the slopes so, so we have gone up to the 60 meters cable length you know say the cable so that virtually the whole slope is you know so the is stitched with bolts and uh, uh, <coughs> other uh, support systems so, so thereby uh, <coughs> the the slopes are stable sometimes you know so we go for the 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 flexible support systems and also the as well so in a in a in certain conditions you know so the ground is very poor and uh, soil con- the, the rock or soil you know so the conditions are very yielding uh, in such cases you know so the, with a lot of water so we will do the pour pulling so the pipes will be injected uh, and uh, through that you know so the grouting will be done 
and a artificial canopy is created before we excavate it because when you start excavating it uh, your roof is going to uh, collapse so, so thereby what you do is you know so you create a uh, a, a canopy and then uh, uh, you proceed for that in the city environment urban tunnels uh, so you have the structures are there but you know so the tunnels are going to be uh, subjected to the lot of you know so the issues uh, <coughs> uh, in such cases you know so the because of the overburden and the other loads so, so there will be the convergence will be taking place so the tunnel is actually the made up to here and beyond that also the convergence is actually the appearing so how do you predict you know say convergence and pre convergence uh, 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 you know say the loads so before you really excavate that's what you know say uh, tunneling all about uh, anticipate and you know say they try to be prepared for it and then you know say they execute it now a typical cross section of a tunnel if you see it you know see it's having lot of systems and uh, this is the atal tunnel so very famous you know so the atal tunnel connecting the manali to uh, 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 spiti uh, uh, spiti valley uh, <coughs> is virtually the 9 kilometers you know so the the tunnel so you have the ventilation chambers are there so this is the main uh, tunnel uh, uh, section and below that you know so you have the escape tunnel what we call is egress tunnel below that you know so that you have the drainage system is there whatever the water which is actually the coming since this is a drained tunnel so it will be it will be it will be sent to this main drain and uh, the main drain is actually the going to deliver the water you know say through the through, through the portal so so uh, the, this is how actually you now see the the cross section looks like if you see the tunnel uh, it's a beautiful you know highly sophisticated uh, uh, every uh, uh, 500 meters you know so the lot of uh, uh, electronic uh, uh, surveillance you know so the systems are there escape routes are also there this is how actually the atal tunnel you know so the looks like this so this is the egress tunnel which will be below uh, this is the escape you know so the tunnel in the static condition that is the way you know so the we do it so the now the i will be very quickly you know so they're going to the the seismic you know so the analysis uh, uh, and design of you know so the 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 tunnels uh, these are the 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 different you know so the important uh, <coughs> uh, items i will be uh, uh, briefly uh, address uh, as we have seen like you know so the we do have that the tunnels which are made you know say through the cut and cover uh, process uh, this is the typical you know say the scenario and you may have the bore tunnels so, so this is uh, uh, you, you have the uh, the uh, using the drilling machine you know so that you are doing the tbm missions and then you do have the immersive tunnels also so that's the below, below the below the water so the offlet you might have uh, you must be hearing it you know say the lot of tunnels are coming uh, to connecting Uh, different islands uh, or islands with the mainland so through the underwater uh, uh, immersive tunnels are coming so again underground structures you know so you do have the cut and cover you know so that uh, so one above the other or you know so the side by side you can have it uh, <coughs> portal uh, structures as well as you know so the deep chambers and waste uh, repositories so, so these are the big ca caverns or cavities you know so which are made uh, for the storage uh we know it you know so the earthquake uh, when the shaking is actually the taking place uh, two type of you know say the effects are going to uh, uh, experience one is the ground shaking and the other one is you know so the ground failure ground shaking you know so we know that uh, there are body waves so, so the body waves are you know say p and s waves so, and you have the surface waves you have the low and uh, rally waves so. so normally we know uh, surface waves are more damaging it uh, Uh, then the 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 body waves so obviously the ground or the tunnel is actually the going to get experience you know see the the ground shaking so the tunnel should be stable enough you know see the for the these motions so then there is you know see the altogether the failure of the ground you know see the uh, we experience you know see the liquefaction because of the uh, the 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 pore pressure increase you know see the momentarily and then thereby uh, uh, the soil behaves like a, a liquid uh, unable to sustain you know say the uh, any structure 
uh, <coughs> slope instability is a major issue so especially the entry points so the entry points of the tunnel are known as no said the portals portal stability is uh, 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 is very very uh, important and the if uh, if the tunnel is actually crossing the fault and the fault is very active and uh, normally you no know, said they will become active because of the the seismic you know uh, the the shaking uh, then it is a it is a major disaster you know say for the tunnel so so um, if you see it you know say sometimes a lot of subsidence etc is going to take place because the ground is deforming it terribly so uh, most of the contents are you know say the uh, are uh, uh, through this particular classical work uh, so the seismic design and uh, analysis of underground structures so, so it is published in tunneling and underground space technology this is uh, uh, international uh, uh, association of tunneling is you no know, say treating this as a, uh, a as a some sort of you know so the uh, a, a code uh, any a tunnel that is actually the coming uh, that should you no know, say go through this particular uh, the 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 analysis uh, <clears throat> because the uh, appropriate codes are still because our experience uh, of tunnels uh, uh, tunnel damages you know so the under uh, 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 seismic you know so the conditions are still you know so the in the initial stages so, so uh, obviously the tunnel is uh, tunnel specifications are going to be very important uh, so the rock and the soil properties ground motion characteristics the depth of structures uh, uh, that is uh, what is the depth at which the tunnel is actually there uh, and uh, what are the structural elements you know so the of the tunnel lining and what is the geometry uh, uh, important uh, so what is the difference between the on ground structures and the underground structures so normally what we uh, uh, do is inertia of the structure and the resonance uh, are important for the design uh, <clears throat> under the seismic conditions for the underground structures inertia of the structure is less than the inertia of the surround surrounding soil uh, that is different here you know so the energy of the structure is you know so the is uh, very high there uh, here it is you know so the is uh, is uh, very less than the 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 surrounding so uh, there is a misguided conception uh, uh, exists you know so the due to the small structural inertia so since inertia is very low you know so the why to worry about you know underground structures so, uh, under the seismic you know say the conditions one need not you know say the uh, worry about it that's the overall you know say the general idea but it is not really correct uh, <clears throat> the seismic design of underground structures is governed by the free field of the ground motion so it is not that you know say the ground and the structure combinedly you do the uh, analysis you know say the normally we do it you know so that there is no structure so the for the free field you know so that you will be doing it so also one can do the soil structure you know so the interaction seismic response of tunneling during the earthquake uh, uh, earthquakes show that the response of the tunnel is dominated by the surrounding uh, ground response not the inertial properties of you know so the tunnel itself as is been told that you know say inertia is very less of the structure but the ground the focus of the underground seismic design therefore is uh, one of the free field uh, deformation of the ground and its uh, interaction you know so the, with the structure so uh, that's the main you know so the difference you know, for the uh, seismic uh, considerations for the underground under, uh, uh, underground structures uh, in any way whether it is a static or underground uh, static or dynamic deformation management is important when you expect something obviously uh, displacement deformation is going to be there so your excavation methodology should uh, should you know say the manage the the deformation before it really collapse so, and also in the earthquake conditions it should be stable uh, it's a classic study you know say the, that has been done you know to show the what is the 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 uh, <coughs> Uh, maximum acceleration you know so the, you will be getting it you know 0.36 g here underground and on the ground you know so the, it is 0.61 and uh, whereas the structure is actually the experiencing it you know so on the surface uh, very high high, high you know so the acceleration 0.78 so that thereby the damages are you know so the quite uh, evident you know so the on the ground so whereas you know so the, if you see it you know so the inside and then you know in the tunnel if you see it you know so the the tunnel is actually experiencing it you know so the less uh, than the the ground itself so 
insignificant inertia effect uh, and uh, uh, in spite of the fact that you know, the similar frequency content now uh, very uh, off late you know so the several documented cases are being uh, uh, <coughs> available to understand like you know the earthquake damages uh, on underground structures so, so ac jc and the other researchers you know so the publishing huge amount of data uh, of the damages uh, uh, that are taken place you know so the, to the tunnels so. Uh, underground structures built in you know, so the uh, of course you know so the 1927 uh, this is one uh, example you know so the i was referring it uh, for this you know so the measured free field is you know so maximum is 0.25 g so observed damages uh, <coughs> to date are insignificant including you know so the the large you know so the loma prieta earthquake so what it means is you know so the uh the uh, the tunnel engineers are cautioning that you know so they don't neglect it uh, the earthquake uh, effect because uh, we have not really uh, uh, come across you know so the major shaking uh, uh, as far as you know so the underground tunnels are uh, concerned so this is uh, typical you know so the failure failures which happens you know so the in the underground you know so the tunnels uh, this is the portal so the portal is completely choked you know so rolling of boulders so and then now you see that you know so the tunnel is completely clogged uh, and then failure of you know so the tunnels inside you know so the forming the big cavities these are the these are the the real examples of you know so the tunnels which were damaged due to the seismic you know so the uh, events another classic study that is available so the lining is completely you know so the cracked the 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 thin lining system which is actually there supporting the tunnel that is completely cracked so uh, the fallen concrete chunks and then fall in concrete lining you know so they around the uh, this one so you get you know so the shear cracks uh, sometimes you know so the uh, warping or the flip off you know so the your invert is actually the taking place you know so that and also you see this you know so the cross section so the cross section is totally totally you know so the uh, displaced hello huh? so uh, uh, this type of you know so the portal uh, uh, failures you know so the you will be you will be you will be getting it so thereby the portals you know so there should be stability of slopes you know and to secure the portals you know so is very 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 uh, important <coughs> and this is also another case you know so the so the dike substation you know so the collapse which was actually the due to the cove you know so the the the, the earthquake what are the damages you know so the normally we get it you know so the columns are get crushed so the roof slab collapse so, so the road surface co uh, co completely settled and uh, the uh, shearing of you know so the bars etc so the uh, <coughs> the 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 central column dividing you know so the both sides you know so the completely uh, uh, crushed and then of course you know so the some damages in the wall etc so Well, for the design of this particular tunnel you know so the no seismic consideration is actually the done so thereby if the designs are actually the made without uh, seismic consideration uh, something like this you know so they may 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 happen so less damage uh, than the surface structures uh, that is in comparison also with the surface structures and the damage uh, definitely you know so the less damage is felt and uh, damage decreases with the depth uh, if the deep tunnels are there you know say the uh, <coughs> damages will be less and cut and cover is you know so the uh, tunnels will be exposed to more damage the structures in rocks are safer than the in soil so uh, <coughs> so uh, now that is also you know so the uh, uh, we can imagine that and stabilization of surrounding soil is more effective than the increasing uh, liner thickness there is a concept that you know so the, the liner thickness is uh, very uh, thick so it will protect but it is not really correct so rather the uh, the ground behind you know so the 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 lining that should be you should actually do you know so the improvement in that uh, <coughs> damage may be related to the p ground acceleration and p ground you know so the velocities trunk motion duration is also important uh, this is uh, quite obvious like you know so the duration is high so then uh, uh, damage is more slope stability is especially for the portals you know so the very important uh, damage of line tunnels are less than uh, less you know so the, than the unlined this is also quite obvious so, so that that is the reason why uh, you cannot even if the rock surrounding rock is good 
uh, <clears throat> uh, it is you know so the uh, advisable you know so that you do uh, some amount of you know so the lining so how do you go about the whole you know so the the uh, analysis and design so first you know so they establish the 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 seismic environment the way which we do it you know so the usually seismic hazard analysis ground response analysis and for that you know so you need to have you know say the geophysical tests so this input you know so you are using it you know uh, assessment of structure behavior uh, due to the seismic uh, uh, seismicity and uh, you can do it in also the analytical methods so through the analytical methods so, uh, um, there are again you know say the two variety of you know say the analytical methods are available to us assume that you know pre field uh, uh, deformation so uh, and then you know so the other one is soil structure interaction as i indicated earlier that normally you know say we prefer the free field uh, deformation uh, assessment and then uh, uh, try to inbuilt you know say in your structure to take into account of you know say those deformations so for this you know say the, this is the 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 overall you know say the methodology soil structure interaction you know so then this is for the full slip or the no slip conditions so which is suggested by the wang and the penjin and in the hazards you know so the these both methods are actually uh, is given so uh, seismic design you know so the procedure this is the usual stuff which we'll do it you know say uh, the conducting the seismic hazard analysis so establishing the design criteria and uh, uh, the ground motion parameters you know say we evaluate and uh, um, uh, <coughs> so uh, in for the seismic hazard you know so the we know they establish a two procedures so you have the deterministic uh, seismic you know hazard analysis and uh, 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 you know say probabilistic you know so the hazard analysis i don't want to go into that so this is uh, the studies which we have carried out you know so the for the delhi region and also we did the phd uh, assessment you know say for the not only for the south africa but also you know say for the delhi and other regions you know say we have uh, done it is a probability based so uh, based on this you know say the you get you know say the 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 seismic hazard uh, <clears throat> uh, and also you know say the we do the 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 ground response you know so the the analysis uh, ground res response analysis you know so the two ways again you know so the as i indicated that you know say the Uh, maximum credible earthquake uh, and the other one is you know so the 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 operating design you know so the ode condition and uh, i just you know so the indicated you know so the how it should be uh, under the mde you know so the different uh, uh, load combinations will be there so you have the dead loads you have the live loads and you know so the earthquake loads are actually going to be there um, so for that you know so the, there are you know so the, uh, um, the equations are available how you consider you know so the loads in the mde so similarly in the ode also you will be able to and then thereby you will be able to assess you know so the ground motion parameters of a particular you know so the the area so this is all actually the same effort one important thing is what is the mode of you know so the response of the structure depending upon the shape of the structure let's see like you know says so circular so it will be uh, it will be experiencing it you know the actual compression and the extension whereas you know so the if you have you know so the a wave is actually passing you know so the along the tunnel or across the tunnel longitudinal bending is going to take place and then various you know so the this is wobbling wobbling effect and then you know so the raking effect for a rectangular or a square issue also the tunnel so so the main uh, considerations are actually for this so how do you go about it to, to predict you know say the 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 different parameters to find the wobbling or the raking uh, uh, effects of, uh, of the structure so um, uh this is again you know so the so the when the when the the waves are actually the passing across the tunnel you know say so the how you consider you know say so the ps wave and the rally waves uh <clears throat> so this is for the wobbling uh the again you know so the wobbling uh, with a non perforated and perforated you know say so the conditions and uh, this is for the raking so how do you uh, consider you know say so the shear, shear strains you know so the uh, um, <coughs> from the raking you know say so the, the the motion so similarly soil structure interaction is also you know so the uh, highly established you know so the process so, uh, 
so these are the uh, the the equations which can actually they give you the actual strain bending strains and the shear forces and uh, assuming you know say certain uh, spring constants so, so you will be able to get the ground displacement uh, uh, <coughs> and also you know so the actual strains into into the system uh, and apart from that you know so the for the overling assessment you know say compressibility c and you know say flexibility f ratios you know so the important and uh, in different you know say the conditions and uh, what is the amount of maximum thrust you know say that, that will be possible so that that you can uh, and then thereby you know say the uh, uh, you, you can you know so the in soft soils what happens in the stiff soils what happens so uh, in the perforated ground you know say how the f changes so that is what you know so the delt uh, similarly like you know so the soil structure interaction you know so the flexibility ratio is very important and uh, the f can be uh, calculated and then if the f is zero the structure is rigid and then uh, if it is less you know so the structure is you know so the stiff and of course you know so the, there are different you know so the the conditions so there are you know so the certain things which are not uh, uh, still a lot of research is actually the happening it tunnel joints uh, at portal and stations so tunnel segments connection designs seismic uh, retrofit and design consideration for the structural uh, support members uh, design strategies of the ground failures so this is a major thing uh, though it is rarely happens but the ground failures you know, so the may take place and the seismic design of high nuclear waste repositories you know, so these are major uh, <coughs> so uh, with this you know so i wanted to conclude it you know so that quickly in one minute uh, knowledge is well established you know so the as in uh, on ground structures so, uh, <coughs> uh, knowledge is not you know so the so that means you know say still lot of scope is actually there measured data and studies are fewer and state of art reviews are uh, uh, available in uh, uh, <coughs> available uh, to some extent seismic loading of underground structures are not uh, as significant as commonly perceived uh, ffd and ssi you know so they are very important consideration uh, in contrast to uh, structure the uh, inertia plays you know so the major role <coughs> into it considerations for the large ground deformations are equally uh, important adoption of design guidelines is not uh, difficult and is recommendable so what are the guidelines which are actually there you know say procedurally they are not uh, very uh, uh, time consuming that can be handled very nicely to get you know seismic effects on the uh, stability of the so regular you know so the follow up one should actually do it uh, uh, <coughs> the main research you know so the uh, the is lies in the uh, one should actually do the instrumentation of the tunnel so so that when there is a earthquake so the damage profiles can be you know say properly uh, <clears throat> so that the uh, we prediction possibilities you know so the one can uh, have it open uh, on the ground you know so this is uh, extensively the happens mechanism of load transfer from the overburden soil to the ceiling of the slab that is still uh, uh, uh not clear influence of high vertical accelerations on generation of large compressive loads on tunnel lining uh, improved numerical models is required significance of ground motion directly uh, directivity and the incoherence particularly in the soft soils is very uh, uh, required to be clarified and repeated cyclic load effects uh, are not really uh, assessed and uh, non conventional seismic joints of the lining bolting water insulation materials uh, uh, should be studied so uh, future is you know so the in underground uh, and uh, we will be having you know say so such a beautiful environment uh, uh, which are safe you know not only in the static conditions you know so the in the dynamic condition also the tunnel the tunnels could be you know say so the safe so these are the young budding you know say so the tunnel engineers uh, from iit delhi and uh, this is the initiative which i belong to thank you very much and i am very sorry that you know so that i have exceeded you know so the time limits so no no sir is completely fine thank you so much for your very informative uh, lecture this is very perfect blend of uh, you know core and applied research and its application into practice yeah so as of now i can't see any questions from the audience so because we are running little bit behind the schedule so i would like yeah. to we'll start with the technical sessions okay so uh, let me introduce first bindya bindya is from uh, jnn college of engineering shivam go shivam shivamogga india 
uh, her topic of presentation is effect of number of reinforcement layers and loading magnet okay so the topic of bindia's presentation is effect of number of reinforcement layers and loading magnitude on the performance of square footing embedded in geogrid reinforcement layers pairs under cyclic loading so bindia please finish your presentation in 8 minutes and now virtual floor is yours please go ahead myself bindia working as a assistant professor uh, in civil engineering department jnn college of engineering shumoga karnataka i am going to give a presentation on effect of number of reinforcement layers and loading magnitude on the performance of square footing embedded in geogrid reinforced flash beds under cyclic loading uh these are the contents of the presentations introduction uh, the flash is a, a by product obtained from the uh, thermal power plants the flash is a very fine powder hence uh, the disposal and handling of the flash is a serious uh, problem and it requires a large uh, storage areas hence uh, in order to overcome these problems Uh, the flash can be utilized in a bulk amount in the geotechnical applications like uh, constructions of the embankment as a subgrade materials in pavements etc so the subgrade properties of the soil can be improved by using geosynthetics in the subgrade uh, the geosynthetics is the cost effective method of uh, ground improvement techniques hence uh, in order to overcome the disposal problem of the flash so these can be used as a subgrade in the pavements and in order to increase the strength the geosynthetics are embedded inside these geogrids materials and methods uh, flash the flash is used as a backfill materials this flash is collected from the uh, raichur thermal power plants according to asdm classification this uh, flash belongs to a class c that is it is a non poisonic flash uh, these are the chemical properties of the flash and this table shows the physical properties of the flash uh, uh, biaxial geogrids are used as a reinforcement the biaxial geogrids with a square aperture is used as a reinforcement and this table shows the physical properties of the biaxial geogrid a uh, mild steel footing so the test was conducted in a square footing of, of dimension 100 by 100 mm and the thic thickness of the footing is 4 mm and the test was conducted in a mild steel tank and the dimensions of the tank is 500 mm and the height of the tank is 390 mm and uh, this is the uh, schematic diagram of the experimental uh, setup uh, the dynamic load is applied by using an automated dynamic testing operator that automated dynamic testing operator it uh, it is a computer controlled device and it runs on a software called movicon here uh, first in this uh, the input data like uh, frequency loading magnitude is uh, fed into the computer according to that the load is applied through uh, to the uh, footing and the uh, uh, settlement of the footing is recorded through these lvdts for this uh, three lvdts are using so both the input data and the output data are recorded in this data acquisition systems and this is the uh, actual image of the experimental setup uh, in uh, unreinforced uh, flash beds the flash Uh, are compacted manually at its maximum dry density of 12.75 kN per meter cube and the optimum moisture content of 423% and in unreinforced flash bed uh, the flash bed is compacted in a uh, three layers of 120 mm thickness and in uh, reinforced flash uh, bed the geogrids are provided in a circular shape a 5 mm clearance is provided between the geosynthetic and the tank in order to avoid the development of the frictions and uh, the reinforcement are provided at a pre at a spacing of uh, 0.3 times of the width of the footing uh, because this uh, spacing is uh, required for the uh, reinforcement effect and also the first layer of the reinforcement is uh, provided at a spacing of 0.3 times of the width 
uh, this spacing is required for the uh, development of the confinement effect and uh, the geogrids are uh, placed in the predetermined spaces and the remaining part is uh, compacted by using a flash and compacted manually and uh, results and discussions effect of number of geogrid layers on 1b embedment depth so uh, this is a graph of number of fluid cycles versus settlement curve for a square footing uh, embedded at 1b embedment depth uh, for uh, both reinforced condition and unreinforced condition. This graph shows that uh, the reinforced flash beds takes more number of the uh, load cycles at any settlement. And in reinforced flash bed, uh, the three number of the uh, uh, geogrid layers shows uh, takes the better performance than the two layers and the four layers. And uh, coming to the uh, performance improvement, so the reinforced uh, flash bed shows better in, uh, better performance than the unreinforced and the improvement uh, is about uh, 200 times for uh, two layers and 40,000 times for three layers and uh, 20,000 times improvement in the four layer reinforcement and the similar result is obtained even for the uh, loading of 350 kPa and 450 kPa. And this is a graph of number of load cycles versus settlement curve for a square footing embedded at 2B embedment depth. Again, in this also, the reinforced flash beds shows better in uh, better performance than the unreinforced flash bed. And in reinforced flash bed, the three layer uh, reinforcement shows the better in uh, better performance. And the similar is the same one obtained for uh, the loading magnitude of 350 kPa and 450 kpa effect of loading magnitude on 1b embedment depth so this is a graph of number of load cycles versus settlement curve for a square footing in unreinforced condition and the footing is subjected to a loading of 250 kpa 350 kpa and 450 kpa so this graph uh, shows that has the uh, loading magnitude increases the performance of the footing decreases uh, and similar results is obtained for even for the uh, reinforced flash beds of two layer, three layers, and the four layers. And next is effect of loading magnitude on uh, 2B embedment depth. Uh, this is a graph of number of load cycles versus settlement curve for a square footing, and it is embedded at a depth of two times of the width of the footing. Uh, in this also has the load uh, loading magnitude increases uh, the performance of the footing decreased and the similar results is even obtained for the reinforced conditions of two layer three layers and the four layers conclusions uh, square footing resting on flash bed with the geogrid perform better than its counterpart resting on flash bed without geogrid Square footing resting in flash bed with three layer geogrid perform much better by taking more number of load cycles and undergoing less settlement when compared to the square footing resting in flash bed with two and four layers geogrid both at 1B and 2B embedment depth. Uh, footing perform better when they are subjected to lower loading magnitude by taking more number of loading cycles and undergoing a less settlement when compared to the higher loading magnitude both in 1b and 2b embedment depth of square footing uh, these are the references thank you uh, thank you bindia for your presentation uh, now i think we can have a presentation from ravi narayan behra so good afternoon to one and all uh, i am dr ravi narayan behra working presently in the Department of Civil Engineering at the National Institute of Technology, Rautala. So the topic of my presentation is settlement analysis of cellar foundation on fictional soil under combined effect of static and psychic load. This is uh, the part of one of my PhD students work, Mr. Subendu Kumar Sasmal. So coming to the outline, so these are the brief outline of my presentation. Then basically the foundations uh, generally in the vicinity of industrial areas, 
then apart from static head loads uh, also subjected to dynamic forces uh, in the form of machine foundation induced uh, loads then the analysis of foundation settlement uh, becomes a complex task as the soil properties vary with each loading cycle and these are some of the uh, review that is done uh, pertinent to this uh, topic so here um, using this beam on non non linear inclined foundation model the strip footing which is resting over a dense sand bed has been subjected to both uh, static as well as cyclic load as you can see and the foundation is a strip footing and the strip footing is subjected to allowable load static load first that is the ultimate load divided by factor of safety then after that the cyclic load uh, in the form of a pulse uh, type cyclic load is applied for 1 million times and the soil footing interface is uh, described with the help of this uh, zero length elements and the footing is model is uh, one dimensional elastic elastic beam column elements and the footing is divided into 100 equal parts with the help of 101 nodes and uh, this uh, node each node having a 3 degree of uh, freedom one uh, two translation and one rotation similarly for soil uh, it is uh, fixed in the uh, degree of freedom is one and uh, these are the details of the numerical model uh, on which uh, the parametric study has been done the factor of safety is varied from 2 to 3.5 the amplitude of cyclic load that is applied is some percentage of the ultimate bearing capacity that is 5 10 and 13% and also the effect of frequency has been studied varying the frequency 0.5 1 and 2 and uh, for uh, as per this uh, fema guidelines the end portion of the footing has to be given more stiffness so that has been taken care by harden et al 2005 And the stiffness was uh, as per Gazetas 1991. Capacity is as per Mayer of 1963. And non-linear properties of the springs was as per Roy Chowdhury 2008. Now coming to soil properties. The soil properties was taken from an experimental paper by Patra et al. 2012, in which the relative density was. Uh, 69 friction angle 40.8 and unit weight was 40.14.66 kg per meter cube and as per this epri 1990 this modulus of elasticity and poisson ratios are taken now coming to model validation so the same model was uh, replicated in plexis 3d and the results were presented here so more or less uh, the open sys all this we b and wf were modeled using open sea software and so that is being reasonable giving uh, good results now coming to the settlement response so this is the long term settlement of footing under cyclic Take so it is uh, 13 percent instead of 15 percent. So as you can see, for a smaller uh, amount of uh, uh, magnitude of cyclic load, uh, so it is giving uh, more uh, less uh, settlement. And as you go on increasing the amplitude of cyclic load, it is going on increasing. And uh, that is the same for all uh, types of uh, factor of safety that is being considered here then coming to the uh, uh, this uh, uh, this frequency component as you can see for a lower factor of safety more or less uh, this is more or less there is not much variation in the settlement and as well as if you go on increasing from the amplitude of load from 5 to 13% there is little bit difference and this difference is uh, pronounced for a higher uh, factor of safety like 3.5 uh, 
this difference is more prominent it is been observed and with increase in uh, factor of safety that settlement is decreasing so generally so the total settlement is more, uh, more or less a combination of static and uh, amount of cyclic load that is being applied next is this critical number of cycle uh, load cycles that is represented here as ncr so basically ncr is nothing but uh, the number of load cycles after which the settlement is more or less stable as you can see here uh, so suppose for a uh, in this case this comes to be the critical number of cycles so based on this uh, for various uh, frequency range that we have considered 0 0.5 1 and 2 these are the uh, critical number of load cycles that are coming and this nature seems to be linear so these are the uh, summary of the our conclusions so the settlement of footing increases with an increase in this uh, qd max by qu and a decrease in factor of safety and the settlement becomes negligible after this critical number of load cycles which is highly influenced by the loading frequency uh, less the loading, loading frequency more will be the number of uh, critical uh, this NCR value and high the frequency less will be the NCR value and NCR and the variation in settlement also increases with the change in frequency for a higher range of factor of safety and uh, lastly this irrespective of the factor safety the effective frequency is more felt for greater amount of this qd max by qu ratio so this is all about the reference that we have considered for this uh, present paper thank you now i am moving on to the second uh, paper so the next paper is on uh, this the review of settlement prediction techniques for shallow foundation subjected to cycle flow. This is the review work done by my student, Mr. Sumendu Kumar Sasma. So, this is the brief outline of the uh, presentation. So, introduction, then we have divided all this review part in uh, basically experimental methods and clinical methods, and also subdivided this experimental methods in surface foundation, embedded foundation, as well as large scale experiments, as well as the central tools. Then we see a wall footing system, then coming to this numerical uh, methods, macro element model, finite element model, non-linear non non foundation model, contact interface model. And based on this review, particularly on cellar foundation, Square, circular, and uh, street foundation resting over positionless soil subjected to static as well as cyclic mode. So, the summary and the finally, what are the way forward for future research in this direction? So, coming to the introduction part, you can see the first uh, left hand side video is a schematic representation of foundation under possible cyclic loads, that is, origin from the ground motion or from the wave action plus this uh, vertical due to earthquake or machine induced load then the second figure this was the ground motion as well as this wind load on the superstructure so coming to this experimental methods for surface foundation the first uh, work was proposed by Raymond and Thomas in the year 1778 and uh, the loading sequence was well, first we allow the static load, then this static load which is some percentage of the ultimate building capacity. That is here taken as from 13.5 to 90 percent. Then they have found that uh, the putting dimension, the intensity of like, static and dynamic load, the relative density of sand and duration of application of load are important factors for estimating the settlement. Next paper is uh, on the by the settle 1995 is a scale square thing resting on a clay bed. Here is uh, first this allowable load uh, that is in the form of US, um, that is the ultimate brain capacity divided by the factor of safety, then some percentage of the load uh, ultimate brain capacity, some percentage of the ultimate brain capacity that is represented as 
back and the pulse load is applied and uh, they are experimental results showing in the right hand side figure and they have also find out the critical number of board cycles after which the, there is no further increase in the settlement similarly by side theater 1998 So yes, uh, they studied the settlement of circular foundation and the loading was just the allowable cyclic load followed by cyclic static load, then followed by cyclic load, and uh, they have observed that the increase in bearing capacity in a range of 10 to 15 percent. Similarly, the first year tall in the year 2011, uh, they have studied the uh, incremental cyclic load that loading pattern is shown in left hand side figure. And also, they have uh, done the initial analysis and compared uh, the results with experimental run, and it is quite matching that can be observed from the right hand side. Then, coming to some work on embedded foundation, first is Gatter and Dobby in the year 1998 performed centrifuge test on square footing. Soil was granular in nature uh, with relative density of 75%, and they found that the contribution of the passive side. Plays or passive resistance plays an important while role while estimating lateral load displacement response of the embedded foundation. The next paper was the Pata et al. in the year 2017. They have performed this experimental study to observe the effect of the rate of loading on the settlement of footing on dry sand. Also, they have found that uh, the settlement versus rate of loading is highly dependent on the relative. And uh, their subsequent paper in 2019, in the same year, uh, they presented plots showing the various settlement of circular foundation. I uh, found that the occurrence of a steady uh, rate of settlement which takes place after 100 to 200 cycles. That means um, MCR is in the range of 100 to 200. So the uh, the uh, summary we can take that the embedded embedment. Of the footing controls the settlement. It passes the distance which is related due to embedment. So coming to large scale experiments, uh, first uh, was done by Negro et al. in the year 2010. They have studied this nonlinear behavior, settlement and rotation of foundation, square foundation of size one meter by one meter on both loose sand and uh, dense sand, and found that uh, more settlement was observed in case of loose sand than the dense sand. Similarly, Fasoli et al. in the year 2001 studied the swamp shallow foundation for a uh, foundation size of one meter by one meter, both loose and thin sand. And he has also they have also got the similar kind of findings. Coming to shear wall footing system, the Gen et al. in 2005 uh, studied the acting or fire. Found that the accumulation of permanent settlement is now. Are you busy? Please finish your presentation ASAP. Thank you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm winding up. I tell you. Role of embedment. Uh, then uh, the next one is by Deng and Carter in 2011. And similar, uh, uh, the subsequent study was by Deng et al. 2012. Now coming to numerical methods. So first was proposed by Nathan and Taran in the in the year. Then uh, this micro element model here uh, without any form of things, the low settlement response can be captured. And these are some of the researchers who have worked using this micro element model. Then coming to finite element model, these are the uh, researchers they have done using finite element model. Then coming to the beam or non non linear nuclear foundation model, so basically. They, uh, this is the zero length element that the soil on foundation soil interface was captured by this zero length element, which was uh, uh, sub further subdivided in plastic and uh, elastic response. And to measure the vertical response, two jet simple springs were uh, used for passive resistance, which is PY simple, and for sliding response, three jet simple springs were used. Then uh, in contact interface model, all sort of uh, loading, uh, all the types of loading can be taken care of. But one major disadvantage is that it is giving more uh, horizontal displacement. 
So these are the summary of what uh, I have uh, presented right now, and these are the scope of future research. Uh, there is the cyclic analysis of foundation supporting vertical irregular structure. The cyclic response analysis of foundation of multi-layer removing soil and improved soil, and the effect of water table can be studied. So these are some of the references. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Ravi, for your presentation. Now I think uh, we can have a floor for question and answer. So we do have one question from the audience. Uh, this question is for uh, Professor K. S. Rao. Uh, Mohit Siyode asks, uh, respected Professor K. S. Rao, thanks for the informative session. Is there any center of study in hazard assessment for tunneling that runs short-term courses? Yeah. Uh, uh, hello. Yeah. So uh, normally, you know, say the, we give the time to time, you know, say the uh, workshops and, you know, say the courses, but not in a continuous basis. Uh, and uh, whenever there is a, the need, you know, say that we can conduct the, the, the courses. Uh, on tunneling regularly, you know, so the more or less, you know, say every year, we will be having a course. And in which, you know, say that we will be uh, dealing with, you know, say the some uh, uh, seismic aspects as well. Okay, so I think we can have one more question for Rao sir, anyone yeah. from the panel or from the audience? Yeah. Okay, so perhaps uh, I can ask one question. So, yeah, so, so, so sir, what is your like kind insight on the structural health monitoring of underground, you know, tunnels? Like we do have a lot of research going on for the above ground structures, but yeah. how, like what is the scenario? So, uh, scenario is a very good question, you know, so the in the NATM, you know, so the, I have given the some instrumentation. So you get you you install, you know, so the extensive meters. So, so then also you put the 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 different, you know, say uh, convergence, you know, uh, mirrors, so that if there is any deformation, you know, so the apparent deformation which is actually happening, it that can be monitored. And also, like you know, so the 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 amount of you know, so the, the there will be load cells will be there. The stress, you know, so that you can measure it. Uh, at certain and then also the deformations you will be able to measure it in also that that is the only you know so the uh, monitoring systems which are there that is to to just you know so the get the idea of whether the support system is actually the getting beacon or not see by by the earthquake shaking you know so the support system will get you know so they shaken up and then thereby your lining is actually going to be, uh, get cracked but if it is, uh, since it is as a RCC uh, concrete lining or, you know, say the uh, free pab, uh, uh, you know, say the segmental lining, uh, if you have any uh, displacements, you know, so that you will be able to, you know, say the visually also you can actually find it out. Most of the time, you know, tunnels will be having the C pace. So yes. like the hotel tunnel, which I said is, you know, so the is uh, because on the top of the tunnel, there is a nala which is actually Actually, the crossing Serenala is crossing it, you know, say 300 meters above. So, thereby, there were a lot of water charges actually happening it, and then thereby the system was not effective, like the drainage system, which was actually the designed, it was not effective. So, thereby, it is uh, coming, the water is actually seeping into the tunnel through the joints, construction joints are there, you know, for every 12 meters, you know, say there will be trans uh, transverse joints will be there, and through those joints, you know, it is coming. So Thank we, you. of course, recently, you know, say we did something to that. Thank Let's you, talk. sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. Uh, perhaps, uh, actually, the time is already over, but I think we can have one question for Bindia and one question for uh, Ravi. Anyone from the panel or the audience? We don't have any questions from the audience. So, Bindia, can I ask one question? Just quickly one question. Uh, yes, sir. So, why the performance of three-layer uh, geogrid system is better than four-layer? Like, do we have any justification? Just uh, uh, sir, uh, has compared to under enforcement, uh, has number of the layers increases, performance also increased. But yes. in uh, reinforced flash bed, uh, uh, the three layer reinforced gives better results. Uh, I was just wondering why. I mean, yes, I can see through the results. Uh, like, what is your understanding from there? Okay, that's okay. Anyone else? Any question for uh, Ravi, Dr. Ravi? Okay, so if we don't have any questions, uh, perhaps we can conclude this uh, session. So over to you, Professor uh, Muthukumaran, sir, please. Go ahead.
thank you thank you so much dr rakesh rakesh for rajesh for conducting the session very effectively just a, i'll give a brief summary of what this session has been taken for the last hours so we started with our so lecture it was very very interesting and informative lectures given by uh, talk given by professor k s rao and this talk was started with a general introduction related to seismicity and professor was introduced about uh, rock stability analysis including analytical solutions and uh, he was talking about uh, tunnel construction methods against the seismic conditions and he has also pointed about the ground improvement especially on the peak rock and he has given a systematic seismic analysis at the same procedure both analysis and the same procedure and he has quoted a very classical statement that displacement management is very important to be considered whether it is static or dynamic analysis so it's a very uh, important classical quote to be how to keep in our mind whenever we do tunnel tunneling the displacement management is very very important and later he has uh, spoken about uh, high guy uh, subway station and especially he has uh, mentioned about the failure mechanism as a forensic study and uh, he has also mentioned about the uh, liner thickness i mean normally we will be thinking that uh, having a thick liner will have a more stability but he was uh, mention about that aspect it's not only with respect to the liner thickness we have to consider the holistic way and he has extended that his lecture towards the seismic design procedure and he has explained all the load combination with respect to various seismic analysis and uh, he has uh, briefly explained about the the one probabilistic analysis uh, seismic hazardous analysis what he has done for the delhi metro uh, and the other other places uh, he has also pointed out very important aspect of shape of the structure how especially under seismic condition the, how the shape is playing a major role in the stability of this uh, underground structures and towards the end this lecture was talking about the soil structure interaction and especially the soil structure interaction study he has extended towards with uh, with respect to the seismic mode of failure so that he has incited the interaction analysis with respect to the mode of failure and he has also mentioned about the special seismic uh, construction consideration and some of the techniques and towards the end he has also pointed out that we need further research in this area especially to understand the failure mechanism load transfer mechanism of the overburden pressure how it has been distributed in the ceiling slab and we need to have a lot of instrumentation towards to have a very systematic uh, approach to understand the uh, rock tunnel stability analysis so that is what uh, professor has uh, really enlightened the lecture was uh, so interesting and of course uh, we are all enriched with uh, your uh, so lectures sir thank you so much for your classical lecture that shows your 40 years experience on this particular area and thank after you. that we have three lectures uh, technical papers uh, these uh, technical papers so basically actually we supposed to have a five papers in this session but we had a uh, three uh, speakers uh, the first paper was presented by um ms bindia effect of number of reinforced layers and loading magnitude on the performance of square footing embedded in a geoprit reinforced flyer split under cyclic loading and this is basically an experimental study he has uh, conducted the uh, uh, geogrids embedment at different depths basically she has considered with uh, the thickness of the foundation 2b 1b and 2b and based on her experimental results she has uh, fruitfully come up with some sort of recommendations which will be really useful for us and followed by uh, dr 
Rabi Narayan Behra has presented two papers. Uh, the first one is uh, Settlement Analysis of Salo Foundation on Frictional Soil and Combined Effect of Static and Cyclic Loading. And he has briefly explained about this concept and basically he has done a numerical analysis using the simple Winkler model concept. And uh, based on that, he has uh, pointed out that uh, two aspects. One is the factor of safety with respect to QA by QA max. It is uh, significantly uh, varying. And the NCR parameter is also significantly changing with respect to this aspect. And of course, the last paper is a review paper. He has uh, consolidated many uh, review papers, that, I mean, recent research outcome on this area, especially the settlement prediction techniques for shallow foundation subject to cyclic load. So it's a good uh, review paper. And uh, he has uh, done a good review. And based on this re review, he has, uh, he has uh, brought out some significant outcome for this particular area. So overall, this session yes. has uh, given a very good insight to all the audience, uh, the panel members. Uh, nevertheless, we had a little bit of distraction with the technological aspect, but technology has failed. The other one has helped us to continue the session successfully. So thank you so much. With that, uh, I declare that this session is closed. I uh, hand over the session to the session coordinator. Uh, Professor Pavindra, over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Uthu Kumar and Ritesh Kumar for handing over me the platform. I am really thankful to Uthu Kumar and Dr. Ritesh Kumar for having accepted our invitation to chair and co-chair respectively. And in spite of uh, your busy schedule, you made it possible uh, on this occasion to handle this uh, technical session 18. On behalf of uh, the organizing committee and on my personal behalf, I thank you very much for your uh, acceptance and participation and uh, conducting the session in a very systematic way and on time. I thank you one and all. It's my honor and it is pleasure to thank our uh, distinguished professor, K.S. Rao, for his innovative and uh, highly comprehensive lecture on seismic aspects and hazard assessment for tunneling. So really, sir, it's a wonderful lecture that delivered and it is an eye opener for uh, young researchers and also the construction industry and the end users. On behalf of the organizing committee, and on my personal behalf, sir, I thank you very much for accepting our invitation and delivering a very fruitful lecture on these sessions. I also thank our uh, paper presenters, Rabi Narayan and Bindia K for their presentations on time in this particular session. Uh, thank you one and all. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now I had an opportunity to listen to Professor K.S. Rao after a long time. I, of course, I heard many lectures, but uh, I, I wish, I wish, I always wish to hear lectures uh, from him Thank many you. times. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you, Muthu Kumaran. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.